For in the hand of Yah, there is a cup. And the wine is red and it is full of mixture. And he pours out the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the Elohim of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, beloved. Let us greet one another. Hallelujah. In the beauty of holiness. Bless Yah.
Halleluja. 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 Halleluja.
And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh Elohim, who brought us out of the land of Mizraim, and now the house of slavery. Bring the hundred of the mighty ones against my face, and now make for yourself a carved image, on the likeness of that, which is in the heavens above, which is in the earth beneath, which is in the waters under the earth. And now bow down to them, and now serve them. For I, Yahweh Elohim, am a jealous hell, visiting the corruptness of the fathers, and on the children, to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But you know, let commitment to thousands of those who love me according to my commands. And I bring the name of your Elohim to Nara, for I'll just not be one of punished who brings his name to Nara. Remember the Sabbath day to set apart. Six days you labor and shut while you work. But the Sabbath day is Sabbath of your Elohim. You not only work, you, and your son, and your daughter, and your male servant, and your female servant, and your cattle, and your stranger who's within your gates. For in six days I made the heavens and the earth. They see you and all that is in them. And the rest is on day. But if you are blessed, Sabbath day and set apart. Respect your father and your mother, so days are prolonged upon the soil which Elohim has given you. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness against your neighbor, do not cover neighbor's house, do not cover neighbor's wife, do not male servant, do not female servant, do not ox, do not donkey, whatsoever belongs to neighbor's. Lord to the king. Uh, Y'all's good all the time and all the time. Y'all's good. All right. I, I, I sound like I'm in a fishbowl. All right. Glory to the king. It's getting better, getting better there. Hallelujah. Most of y'all, we come to this Sabbath that you invited us to. Thank you for another day of rest, relaxation, Father, and reflection upon you and you alone. I cannot help but to say over and over again, I'm sure the sentiments of a lot of Israelites, Father, we truly want you to come. And we want you to come quickly. For the end of all this, Father, it's just a fact. Uh, we're looking forward to the kingdom. We thank you for writing our names down in the Lamb's Book of Life, helping us to repent of our sins, iniquities, and transgressions. So, Father, be mindful of us and remember our frame that we are dust. We need constant improvement over and over again. We know the only reason why we're pleased in your life is because of Messiah. And for that, we thank you, Jesus, for your blood. We thank you for the atonement. We thank you for the ultimate sacrifice. The only can hope we can bring uh, glory to your name while we have a little time lotted on this earth. Speak to us your words of truth. Help us bring about a performance of what you meant by us being light to the Gentiles of this world in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You may be seated. All right. Glory to the King. All right, let me try, I'm trying to put this, if I put it in my mouth, it does pretty good. So I got a, a letter this morning uh, from a WWCR. Most of y'all don't know who WWCR is. Y'all may have heard me mention it on, you heard me mention it all the time on uh, Blog Talk Radio. It's one of them radio stations. <clears throat> this was a radio station right here that reaches a hundred countries when you broadcast one time. And um, let me see what it says. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even have the first part of it. I only have the second part of it. You don't never know what these printers are doing, you follow me? So anyway, what they do is they, um, they have realized that I used to be a former broadcaster on their particular station and they're pretty much asking me to come back on. I only got the second part right here, so I didn't even see that. Because sometimes them printers, man, they don't even print the letter full page. You see that? I don't even know what this stuff is. Um, and so they're, they're saying that if you go on Amazon and you look and you notice that there's a, an extraordinary amount of shortwave radios that are actually being sold in America and across the world. Now, people are, uh, are, look like they're, they're slowly but surely uh, trending away from social media um, because it's just a mess out there. I showed one of my issues morning a, a picture that somebody put on Facebook, and I go, why would they do that? You know what I mean? Why, why would they do that? But anyway, it says that uh, younger technical people have become more interested in shortwave as popular influences mentioned on WWCR broadcasts. 
and WWCR continues to reach over 100 countries per day, listeners to WWCR can hear the message without censorship. You getting that right? You know, you can pretty much say what you want to say. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm reaching out to see what level of interest might exist in a return to WWCR International Shortwave Radio. And I look forward uh, to further discussion on this opportunity. Respectfully yours, Bradley Murray, and I don't know him. Uh, I knew a one, I forget the other guy's name, but oh well, I don't know. I don't know. Because then if I do that, then that means I have to get on the radio station, uh, at times go down the radio station or send in some pre recorded broadcasts, and all it's going to do is just take up more of my time, if you know what I mean. I can delegate it to somebody and y'all do it. You know what I mean? I don't know. Sounds good to me. Hallelujah. Accusing spirits. Accusing spirits. <clears throat> now, you know what's really disappointing about dealing with messages concerning spiritual warfare and deliverance? Is that we don't let these sayings penetrate us. They, they don't become a part of us. So when it happens, we don't even know when it's happening. If someone is accusing, we don't even know when it's happening. As a matter of fact, if any spirit is doing anything, it's, it's like that we enjoy being asleep. The purpose of these messages is for not only for self-improvement, but for you to bring, you know, for me to help you bring awareness to what the hell is really going on. So you can be better equipped to be able to get some soundness and some peace in your life, some deliverance. And then help others to get set free. Am I making sense? So, the Most High, Yahshua, he's quoting the prophet Isaiah. And he says that the spirit of Yahweh is upon me because he have anointed me to do what? Preach the message. To the poor, he has sent me to heal. Ain't nobody ever talked like that until he came. The brokenhearted. And to preach Deliverance to the what? To declare deliverance. To proclaim deliverance. To the who? Captive. So that's implying that people are captive. Every single one of us. Mm -hmm. Recover another sight to the blind. To set at liberty that them are bruised. And then we stop. Revelation 12, 10 says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation. Now has come what? Salvation. salvation and strength and, and strength and the kingdom of our Yah and the power of his Messiah. For the who? For the who? Of the what? That's why I keep bringing up over and over again. Job is one of probably the most profound books that gives us insight to what really truly is going on when you really take your time and read it and not read it like uh, or not listen to it the way that the Baptists preach it lying all over Job but Job just happened to show us in that book right there what's really going on in the heavenlies and what goes on in our life on a daily basis see this is just wasn't just one some one time thing that took place this is something that takes place all the time I mean, when you're afflicted, do you ever check to see if the first thing you're being afflicted because of demons? Uh-oh, see, see how quiet it get? And then watch this. Instead of always looking for some type of remedy of your affliction, what about you went astray? Uh-oh. I'm telling you, man, a lot of y'all, man, y'all have systemic sickness. Constantly sick, man. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Uh-oh. Yeah, before I was afflicted, I went. But see, nobody ever looks at the astray. We just want to put a Band-Aid on the affliction. Oh, I'm, I'm sick. Give me some super virus. See, we didn't divorce ourselves from repentance. We didn't divorce ourselves from scrutiny of repentance. Think about that. Satan told him the most high, let me afflict this body. 
He'll curse you. All before the end, Job was doing good. So I, I think, so I, in this generation, I think that people don't took uh, the perspective that if they get afflicted or something is going on with them, then it, it can no longer be any demonic influence. You know the reason why we believe that, right? Because you don't see much deliverance going on nowadays. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. I, was, I talked to so many community heads and pastors this, this week alone. Phone just blowing up all over the place. Am I telling the truth, y'all? My phone was just on overdrive this week. And I said, I keep telling y'all what the main problem is, is that the people are worldly. They're cardinal. They're not seeking y'all like they did when they first loved him. I didn't say when he first, I said when they first loved him. They done got a little slumber, a little folding of their hands. Yeah, we have complacent. And we acting just like um, wide awake Gentiles, just existing, just walking around, like almost like Holy Spirit zombies. And the devil done put all that complacency all over you. Remember when you first heard? How excited was you? And I'm going to ask you a question. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, but all you like it now. Now watch this. Be not weary. No, no, no. See, you already faint. This says not be not weary in well doing. So you stop doing well, so therefore you're weary. Uh-oh. Because if you was doing well, you wouldn't be weary. You got something sold and you're looking for the bumper crop to come in for you to reap. It takes a little time for it to come to full maturity. You waiting on the harvest, ain't it? For in due season, you shall do what? If you don't, we'll do what? But some of you already sleeping. You can't even faint because you're laying down, loving the slumber. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Again, do you remember when you first met Jesus? Where did that fire go? Where did that love go? You remember how that you, you, you pretty much was trying to get every waking moment you could to read the word. What happened? Oh, boy. What happened? Mm -hmm. I know what we'll do. Well, um, you know, like a husband and wife, he happened or she happened. If, if I'm asking a question, what happened? It's personal to the person. You can always blame somebody else for what happened, but the truth is you don't want to stand in need of prayer. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, the fire and the zeal just ain't there. And what is Satan's, one of, one of Satan's main jobs is to do? To wear out the patience of the saints. See, somebody's in tune in the spirit. The rest of them, huh? I had brothers already quoting. You know it. See, you already know it. To wear out the patience. And when you wore out, you couldn't even, re no, no spirit of recall. You don't even know what your enemy up to. How you where are you going to prepare yourself for war if you don't know what your enemy up to? How can you prepare yourself for battle if you don't know what the enemy is up to? I mean, to be a good warrior, the best thing you do is study your enemy. You study what time they go to bed. You study what time they wake up. You study when they go. To, they have a pattern of, of using the restroom. Look, look at them. Look. Yeah, you, I mean, you study everything about them. You watch their routine, what they do on a daily basis. And, oh, oh, that's a waste of time, not for a warrior. I told you, man, the worst thing we can do is, is embark on and know about the power and the, of the kingdom of Yah and the power that Yahshua has given us and then not use it. How many times I told y'all, we got a whole host of angels just waiting to do something. 
Ever since Messiah, it's been 2,000 years, these angels ain't did too much of nothing. Then all of a sudden, they come to this century right here, and then people start talking about healing and deliverance, and they're like, wow, we finally get to do something. And now, we're headed right back to the place. They feel like they, can't, they ain't doing nothing again. Sitting there chomping at the bit. Daniel gave give us great insight. Praying, seeking for an answer. Hey, Daniel, guess what, man? I know you prayed 21 days ago. Sure did. But there's something going on up there that you don't know about. So you mean to tell me that there's a whole host of, of hell up there that's trying to prevent the answer that you petition y'all for to get into this realm? To deliver it to you. And then even when the angel gets it delivered, it still got a fight to get back out. It's a constant warfare. Constant warfare. So by enemy, he don't use weapons like we do. Hmm? He uses stuff like lying spirits. Accusing another brother. Mm-hmm. But the accusers cast down, that's the chief one, which accused them, wait a minute, how often? And if you got day and night, that means they don't stop. How would you know if Satan, one of Satan's minions of spirits is operating in one of the saints or somebody? All you got to do is pay attention to the fruit. I may say it again later. Y'all know the reason why I'm so affected and why people always want to tap out when I start talking? Because I know I'm dealing with the spirits. See, I'm fully aware we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I'm going to wear them spirits out before them spirits. Them spirits ain't going to wear me out. You get it? And next thing you know, y'all ain't never did deliverance and then the demons will say, would y'all just leave me alone? Would y'all just stop? Y'all never see them doing that? I do the same thing out here on social media when people start attacking me. I get the point, man, get the point, people. Would you just leave me alone? Would you just stop? Because I'm saying words specifically to deal with the spirit and not the person. Now, I have to deal with the person, but my words are directed to the spirit. In which the spirit is in that host. Is that making sense? So the book says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. What is the first thing you always keen on as soon as somebody start in? What about the spiritual influences? Where are they at? Where are they at? In the mind, in the highest place there is. And they're in the mind seeking to bring their kingdom into this realm. They cannot have any access into this realm unless they, unless they have a willing host. A willing host. You know how you become a willing host, right? You get offended with your brother. You notice I told you. Like I said last night, man. Man, when the devil talked, man, he talked like he, he full of peace. Anytime these evil spirits talk, man, they ever notice how they befriend you? They on your side. They never tell you nothing wrong about you. You never get no correction. They always putting the finger on everybody else. Huh? And it's amazing. We know that the Holy Spirit, when he speaks, it's like, it's a still, small voice. And if you ain't really in tune spirit and you're spiritual and you're distracted by the cares of this life and the cares of this world, you're going to miss his voice. But man, when Satan talk, clear signal. Clear signal. You know exactly what he's saying. You don't need no interpretation. You don't need a struggle to hear it. You get it. And yet, we think it's us. Uh-huh. The Greek word diabolos, devil, false accuser, slander, prone to slander, slanderous, accusing falsely, accumulator, uh, false accuser, slander, i.e., Satan, the prince of the demons, the author of evil, persecuting good men, estranging mankind from Yah and enticing, what does he do? What does he do? Now, we know what James and them said about enticing, right? 
A man is drawn away. A man is led astray. Huh? He's drawn away. How is he drawn away? Of his own, own what? When he's what? Enticed. So if there's something in there that's lustful, all, the only thing Satan got to do is put something in front of you now and entice you, and off you go. Bam, he got you. But if you believe you all that in the bag of chips you got all together, you're already on the losing side. I mean, for Satan to tempt me to go out there and just blankly sin, man, I'll be more tempted by a popsicle. Did you hear what I said? To, to blankly sin. I said, I'd be more tempted by a popsicle than just to go blatantly sin. Because sin is what? Transgressing the law. And it go, shoot. Y'all already see my expression. What happens automatically is like a fountain turn on. As soon as I start talking about the law, boy, it's just, yep. At any time, if any time I want to get stirred up, man, hope you can get there one day. That law just touches, man. Because it's y'all breathe. It's his essence. You understand? It's, it's all of who he is. And that law gives us insight into his heart. And when you comprehend, then you really see, man, y'all is really righteous. Man, is he righteous. Woo. I can't help that. Mm. Maybe if I would become a movie star, if I need to do a crying scene, all I need to do is just start talking about the law for a second. You ain't got to put no fake tears on me, boy. They, they just come and stream then, wouldn't they? Hallelujah. But enticing them to sin, afflicting them with diseases. You notice everything today is a disease. Now, if the world is calling everything a disease, that means disease, 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 be diseased. You getting that? If they know everything, then they know it's got to be devils, but you always ask them. They don't know. Anytime I do have to question a doctor or a nurse, I understand the diagnosis, but what is happening with people that these situations or these circumstances or these afflictions, what is it about them that it just comes up? Uh, well, we don't know. I say, y'all the experts. You know how to prescribe something. Huh? Now, you know just what I think about this for a second. All right? So, if, if you got the flu, right, you know it's going to be another strand of flu coming, right? Or if you get the cold, you know it's going to be another strand of cold coming, right? Something like that, right? So, you get finished conquering something, do you use the herb or the field or whatever, or you just let time and chance let your immune system fight or whatever. Then your immune system has got to develop another type, a prototype, or something stronger in this music to fight the new strain that's coming. Now look at the devil. Remember when, when the jab was running full, full fledged? What happened to all of us non jabbers that's supposed to be a threat to the humanity and we was going to kill everybody on the earth? We are, man, and maybe we ought to make some good search. We ought to make some search called non jabbers. Non-jabber survivor. I don't know. Come up with a good slogan because the way they were painting it, we, we are the ones that's a threat to all of humanity. I was like, man, Satan is really pouring it on. People lost their jobs, their careers. There are some people, man, you ain't putting that crap in me. Remember that guy from Buffalo Bills? Fell out on the field. Have you seen him back on the field yet? No, you may have seen him walking on it. You ain't seen him playing on it. Where is he at? Uh-oh. See what I'm talking about? I mean, after all, if you, you healed, you delivered, you said, why ain't you back out there playing? Uh, what's his name? Hamilton, something like that? Hmm? See if he's still on the roster. That would be a good question right there. I'm going to go check, see if he's still on the roster. Because I, if he's on the roster, he damn sure ain't on that field. And he was a starter. You could tear your ACL and be back on the field in a year. MCL, on the field in a year. You fall over dead. 
they resuscitate you all of a sudden. Now you ain't back on the field? I mean, after all, ain't you born again? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Don't that make sense? If ain't nothing wrong, man, hey, let's get back at it. Now, y'all saw the hand of Satan and what he wanted to do. He wanted to literally, truly, it was a test run. You see, if you're ready, if, you get, if this world is ripe to receiving the mark. And as I told you, I traveled all over the place um, during bovine, bovet. I traveled all over the place. I remember one time I was traveling, I even had bovet and I still kept traveling. And man, the people, ooh boy, you should have seen them stand up there where they proud. Uh, they proud little, little stamps and, 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 and uh, little checks of approval where they, I done had my eighth vaccine shot. And they stand up there with their little passport, want everybody to see it. You know, like when you're in church, you remember y'all going to Christian church? If you was going to tie out a dollar, you just cover it up like this. But if you're going to give a hundred, you're just kind of folding it out in front of everybody. And, and if you had to walk up front, you know, sometimes they have an offer to play up front. And you're going to give a dollar, you just go, you, get, you have a hundred dollar bill in your hand, you walking up there like this. Yeah. Hey, 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 have a good day, Doc. Have a good day, Doc. <laughs> and the white folks said, what y'all doing? Ask it, am I telling the truth, black folk? <laughs> See, <laughs> See, that's what they be doing. Some of you white folk been to black churches, y'all know what I'm talking about. And robbing y'all the whole time. Even when you gave a hundred, you just rob y'all of his glory. I used to give my, when I used to give my all this stuff, I used to, to have a little child. Come here. Here, take his up there. Here, put up in that pot up there. <laughs> Are you getting it? Man, I tell you, but they had a test run. A lot of people failed it. <clears throat> Gino Jennings was telling everybody, I got to get the, the bovine, what I call that thing? Bovid. Bovid. I got to get the bovid. The bovid jab because I got to go preach. Well, damn it, I wouldn't preach. I didn't go get it. Now, you know, if the pastor going to go get it, guess what? Everybody else going to like little sheep. See, this congregation, I'm sure the majority of y'all, um, yeah, Pastor, you know, I'm, I'm sure, he, okay, he, he went and got it, but I'll be damned if I am. Or, or y'all was sitting, look and see if I'm going to roll over and die. He ain't dead yet. <laughs> but he's supposed to be a thinking people. He's supposed to be able to think independently. He's supposed to be able to use the mind that y'all gave you. We just need you to use it in spiritual warfare. And don't ever get lax. Remember I told you last night when we was... Out there on the boat, we was going in. It was a nice place. Well, the first time we went in summer, she noticed, the first thing she noticed was clothes. Camouflage. Hey, hallelujah. Got any ice cream? Ooh. I said, yeah, I got distracted for a moment, too, when you mentioned ice cream. Sure did. But I still made my rounds. Do, 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 do. Looking, carrying on. Brand new place. Hostile environment. I'm getting ready to have them to go in there. Uh, man, I got to check this thing out. Hmm? He went outside. They had the bathroom on the outside. Went outside to the bathroom and everything. Came back, give me your sign. Y'all good. Beautiful, isn't it? Y'all remember, Israel, don't, when you go outside of your gates, you're in hostile environment. Stop being, yeah, sleep. Stop being asleep because it's going to be that day that something's going to probably take place. It's, I'm telling you, man, you don't never know when something's going to go, somebody's going to go crazy. Folk going crazy out there. Just the other day, somebody, 
pumping gas. Somebody decided to go by, pow, 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 just start shooting folk. Told one of the brothers when he seen us packing up one time, he seen me always carrying my, my primary. Where you carrying that? I said, man, you ain't never seen Sicario? Man, what are you talking about? Man, them people was in busy traffic. A firefight ensued. I don't care who guilty. We in busy traffic and a firefight ensued and some bullets hit up on my car. I got some, hey, I have precious cargo in there. I don't give a damn who. There's going to be some return fire. Everybody guilty. <laughs> and I teach them, you see me firing, y'all better pull y'all crap out. Because I don't want nobody to be sneaking up on me while I'm distracted. Some y'all line them up. And sometimes I think they're probably itching them. But you have to protect yourself. And you also need to have this same type of mindset in spiritual warfare. You can never be lax. Because you've seen that the enemy wars day and night. He don't ever sleep. He's always working on you. Hallelujah. But he's seeking to afflict us with diseases by means of demons who take possessions of their bodies at his bidding. Uh-oh. According to the definition, demons afflict our bodies because of sin, and sin is the cause of diseases. Just like Job, Satan accused us before Yahweh and tried to move him against us. It's a test. You remember the Torah even said that Yahweh tests us. Yes, he does. However, when affliction and temptations and challenges come into your life, it's not Yah that's doing this. It's the house of time. Y'all can't be tempted. Neither does he tempt man. So you can know when you're being tempted, y'all ain't got nothing to do with it. Don't believe it's King James' wicked translation. An evil spirit from the Lord. Now, from Baal, y'all get it. From y'all, uh-uh. He can get permission, but y'all ain't the one that's doing the afflicting. Do you understand that? In 1 Kings 22, 19, coming from the Scriptures verse, then he said, Therefore, hear the word of Yahweh. I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne. And all the hosts of the heavens standing by him and his right hand and on his left. All the hosts were standing where? On the right hand and on his left. So there's a throne up there, right? Throne, not thrones. I heard a preacher the other day. Man, he said, he says, there's two thrones up there. One for Jesus and one for Yah. I said, hey, look at the devil and the devil is a liar. I don't care what you read, you ain't going to read about all these thrones. You ain't going to read about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh Elohim is way in three persons. He ain't schizophrenic. Where's the doctrine of the Trinity? Ain't in the book. I mean, you don't believe in a trinity, you ain't a Christian. Hallelujah! Do me a favor. <laughs> anyway, there's a throne up there. And Yahweh said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that A lot of talking going on up there. Mind you, all his horses around him. I keep trying to tell y'all, Satan ain't burning down in hell. He's to and fro walking up and down this earth. And then when he has a special person, he wants some attention. We go straight to the throne. Satan, what are you doing? Walking to and fro up and down this earth, causing all kind of sin, hell, the devil, the chaos, and everything else. Oh, yeah? What about my servant? You ain't never seen nobody like Job. You know what? I thought about him. Only one problem, though. He got a big old head that you put up around him. You know what that head's was, right? Job's righteousness. Y 
God shielded him. Job ain't never really had no temptations and battles. He was already shielded. And y'all knew it too. Why would you take a righteous man and then throw him in the fire? Job don't know it. He living on his earth. All of a sudden, everything, man, you know, man, yeah, 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 you can tell, yeah, I, we ain't even try to mess with him because he can't get past the hedge. Take it down, though, let's see if he love you. Mind you, here's Job prospering, doing good, and everything he put his hand to. All of a sudden, well, taken away. Still don't deny y'all. He blessed y'all when he had everything, still blessing when he had nothing. 100% consistent. Go away again. Hey! How you doing? Well, let me hit his body. If I hit his body skin for skin, it's over well. But I tell you what, you can do it, but you better not touch his life. What does that mean? That means Satan has the ability to set up situations to get you killed. Uh-oh. Then why did God tell him, don't touch his life? Uh-uh. You been at the wrong place at the wrong time. What do you mean the wrong place? You ain't supposed to be in that shopping center. You supposed to be at the store buying groceries. Next thing you know, well, they had a mass shooting at the mall. Why? Gun-free zone. Only cops and criminals don't obey that. They supposed to be at, at Publix. Well, sorry, they ain't there. I need for you to come down here and check out this body bag and identify them. Come on, sisters. How many times you told your husband you was going here and you went to four or five other places unprotected? Look at them. Well, I just don't see it like it. There's a lot of things you don't see. How can he be a protector when he don't know where you at to protect you? Well, if I'm over there, he can't protect me. At least he know your whereabouts. See, the reason why you don't tell him because you know that he's going to say, what you going over there for? And they'll throw a monkey wrench in your plans. No, he don't mind you going over there as long as he's with you. See, now we drive off in, I just don't want him to see what I'm going to buy. He going to see it when you see it on you anyway. He's going to say, where'd you get that? Uh, 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 <laughs> Isn't that amazing how involved in life I am? Y'all to see how many of them just back there just smiling. See, we don't want to be under authority. Just like that, that little guy, that young guy with Michael Israel, it seemed like he was so interested. Man, y'all don't see right past that caca. Them good words and fair speeches, man. I'm acting like I'm interested and then listen to how his questions is laced. He ain't interested in nothing. He ain't going to do nothing. Like he trying to know he ain't. Well, we'll see. I hope so. I hope I'm wrong. But he ain't going to do nothing. Hallelujah. So one sat on this mountain, another sat on another mountain, and there came forth a spirit and stood before Yahweh and said, I will persuade him, I will entice him, I will convince him. Notice the spirit. How are you going to do that? By admitting thoughts and suggestions to your mind. And Yahweh said unto him, wherewith? He said, I will go forth and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. All of them? Yeah, all of them. I mean, if I got all these voices, he won't be convinced then. You get all these voices right, man, he's going to sing. And he said, you shall persuade him, go and, and prevail. Also, go forth and do so. Lion spirit. So regardless of what is happening to you, never lose focus that we are fighting against evil spirits who are influencing it and controlling its host. Remember, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. The same way, 
we attack demon spirits, you can also defeat them with the word of truth and make them run. It's the word. Are you following me? You cannot, you can confront issues without any ill will in your heart. Just stand on truth and watch evil spirits. Just watch them. Proverbs 10 and 30 says, the righteous shall never be moved, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. Is that, don't that sound like y'all's consistent? When the flood came, who inherited the earth? The righteous did. Who was taken away? The wicked did. See what I mean? You in Christianity, you'll say the opposite. Now they got you convinced that before tribulation happened, you're going to be whisked away. The mouth of the just bring forth wisdom, but the forward tongue shall be what? The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speak of what? That's what it looks like. See, that's you. <laughs> Which is why eyes wide open when these spirits are y'all get into a zone. Eyes get bigger than mine, get that thousand y'all stare. Hey, snap out of it, huh? Hey, spirit, spirit talking, y'all. Look, <laughs> look at them, they thinking. Yeah, they're thinking. They think they're thinking. They're doing some real good listening right now. Say, look. That's how you look, JC, when those spirits be talking to you. I just didn't have a picture of you to put you up there. <laughs> how serious is y'all about us serving him? That's the question, right? Israel, we're going to read y'all's law, so listen closely. Listen real close. Undivided attention, no distractions, okay? Deuteronomy 13, 1 from the Amplified. If a prophet arises among you or a dreamer of dreams and gives you a sign or a wonder. So if they rise and they give you a what? Sign or wonder. What are y'all going to do one day, man, if somebody come in here and they want to preach and all of a sudden they start walking on air? You're going to say, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, it's a miracle. And probably, let me, let me, if anybody ever get invited here, preach, you start walking off that stage and you on air, it probably wouldn't be a good thing for you here. You may get lit up. You just don't ever know what people may do. Hey, just look at what the? Huh? Floating. Y'all know the reason why I'm putting this out in there, right? Because when the enemy comes, he's going to be doing lying signs and wonders. And he's going to convince a lot of people, and especially those who don't know the book. This world, if somebody can go and perform any miracle, everybody goes run after them. They do. They go run. They, they, the Catholics, man, they say they see this little, little woman up in the air. And t I'm telling you, it's streaming all over the place. And they'll go and make a pilgrimage to that place. I remember when I was in Mexico, they had these statues of Mary on the back of these pickup trucks looking like terrorists. Look, really, look like a terrorist. And, and these people will run all over the country behind this statue and run all day long. Truck, I mean, idols and pickups everywhere. And they're running all over the damn place, chasing after this stone image. What is that called, Nelly? Summer, what is that called? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Day of the dead, what is it called? Guadalupe. To me, it's fabric. You know what I mean? I see the book. I see somebody running after a, a stone image. They got eyes they can't see, ears they can't hear, a mouth they cannot speak, and yet they're exuberating all this energy. 
and they really truly believe whatever they're doing. I don't know if they're sending up timbers. I don't know if they're building a home in the kingdom. I don't know what they're doing, but they believe it. They believe it enough to run all over the country. That's powerful. Because go touch that statue and see what happened to you. See what I'm talking about? That's some powerful stuff, man. What kind of influence are you under? Uh-oh. Hope you ain't got no sacred secrets. And the sign and the wonder which he spoke foretold you come to pass. And if he says, let us follow after other Elohims whom you have not known. And let us serve and worship them. Now see, y'all have to understand worship ain't just you bowing down. When it says, in him only shall thou worship, in him only shall you serve, him only shall you obey. And him only shall you serve. To so whomsoever you yield your members, servants to obey, that's whose servant you are. Uh-oh. See, we got to take this further than just worship. Who do you obey? And who you find out who you obey, that's your God. Uh-oh. I'm talking about in this realm, right? I'm not talking about wives submit yourself to your own husbands. I'm not talking about that. Servants be obedient to your own master. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about this spiritual junk that's going on. <laughs> Satan is a trickster. He's an emulator. He can't come up with nothing new. He's going to always try to mimic the Messiah in any way, shape, fast, or form. And when this, when this, when this dude come up on the scene, the whole world is going to be deceived. That's how strong the delusion is going to be. Only a remnant is going to be preserved. That's why you got to keep yourself at the love of God and worship them. And you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or the dreamer of dreams. For Yahweh your Elohim is testing you to know whether you love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and mind and all your soul, your entire being. I mean, there could be a spirit rise up among you trying to entice you. To leave this place. What are you going to go do? I told you. I'm going to say it again. I have never seen nobody leave this and show us how to do it better. How to serve y'all better. Because if you're leaving something like this, surely you want to go do it better so you can be a light. And let everybody know this revelation you got. Think about it. Man. If you're going to leave this, man, go do it so we can, we can be proud of you. It ain't always, like I said before, I was telling the other one, I said, it ain't always got to be no conflict. I remember when Ray left, right? He come up in the house. Well, I'm leaving. I said, I know. Then he kind of flicked, you know, like a channel chain station right in front of me. I said, I know. Why do you think I've been giving you well over 75 to 80% of your offering for the last few years? So you can build you up a nice little nest egg. Brother, I'm not the only one. No, all the Israelites know around there. There's a certain spirit that accompanies people that get a spirit on them like you. That's what you say. I said, no, that's just the way it is. But they, they do have discerning of spirits too. Bud said he got to be the seed of Ishmael because he's a contrary to all men. He can't get along with nobody. He's not making a personal jab at him. He's just assessing something. You follow me? I mean, he's spiritual. Next thing they start distancing. You make concessions for him. You give him everything he wants, still ain't enough. Why you give him everything he wants? So he can leave. <laughs> I said, man, it sure would be nice if somebody's going to leave. Oh, uh, Pastor, I'm just going to go ahead and go. Bye. See you later. Even try to give him some money. He wanted to be contentious with that. This is how these spirits are. Because see, now, since when, if people are going to leave, remember the gate swings both, swings both ways, right? When, so I'm going to write down a piece of paper. Okay, so I'm going to give you this amount of money. Well, you're not giving me nothing. He made up something. He said, he said, you remember when I was over in Sweden, and I sent you $5,000, and I said, this $5,000 right here is for me and my family or whatever we're going to use for our self person. I said, no, because that ain't the way the ministry operates. That's how I know I didn't say nothing like that because we don't operate like that. We give all.
Well, I'd like to have that $5,000. I said, you ain't getting it. I said, I'll give you some money, but you ain't getting no 5000 How much money did I give you, Brother Bud? How much, brother? Speak loud, Brother Bud. said, $4,000. Because I was off the land. I said, hey, hey, um, give him this letter. Give him this. They tell him, once he signed this piece of paper right here, he can have the money. Come here for a second, Brother Bud. This is how difficult people when they got spirit told. Watch this. And this is going to help y'all leaders out there in the community. Then what happened uh, when you presented to him and, and wanted to give him the money if, after he, signed, if he would have signed the piece of paper? The first thing is because the paper you said to help him reestablish himself, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't have it. He did you hear, me at all. He did you hear what I said? It. Did you hear what he said? First, I already know you got all this money, and then I'm going to still turn around and give you 4000 out of the five that you said that we made in the grant, which we, I know we didn't. And he said, uh-uh. And so you took that word out. So we took the paperwork, we took it back to Summer. Summer retyped it. Concession. All right? What happened then? It was the word give you had in there. To give. You ain't giving it. It's mine. And it's like, I, I didn't want to go back to you and tell you again. It's like, <laughs> he ain't accepting this. I don't What do you want to do, chef? I said, tell him he ain't getting shit. <laughs> Bye. See what the pride did? You can only go so far. You understand what I mean? But I, be, I guarantee you'll never hear that side of the story. Thank you, my brother. See, this is stuff that y'all don't know to go on behind the scenes. Y'all remember when Nate and Sarah was living here? He, he came here and he said, he, he told me he gave off. I said, really? I said, how much money you got over there in your place? Oh, ten thousand dollars. Said, bring it over here and give it to me. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to prevent you from receiving a curse of Ananias and Sapphira. Bring it over here and give it to me. He bought it over here and gave it to me. You know everybody eating that up. Y'all know what I did, right? I gave him all ten thousand right back. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> See what I mean? Sure did. Because just in case somebody get out there and start saying something. I guarantee you don't never hear these sides of the story. It's amazing how that information is withheld. Y'all get that? How do we get over here from there? I don't know, but y'all there though, huh? <laughs> we right here and ended up over here. Let's find out then, all right? And Yahweh Elohim is testing you, I got it, to test. Test you to know whether you love Yahweh Elohim with your heart your mind, your soul, and your entire being. You shall walk after Yahweh your Elohim, and you shall fear and worship him with all filled reverence and profound respect. And you shall keep his commandments, and you shall listen to his voice, and you shall serve him and, 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 and. That's the reason why I love that law so much. See, I know I've been trusting him all my life since being born again, so I, I definitely cling to him. You follow me? I cling to him. But the prophet, or the dreamer of dream, shall be put to death. That prophet shall be put to death because he has counseled. Now, when we going to stop all this nonsense letting these false prophets and these false brethren spit in our ears? That's what he's got finished doing. Counseling rebellion against Yahweh your Elohim, who bought you from the land of Egypt. I don't have any confidence in this generation that we're going to stop murmuring once the tribulation starts. Or if the world gets bad, I don't think we're going to stop murmuring. I think a few people have, have somewhat good control over their spirit, but for the most part, most of you are too li loose-lipped. You'll let anything fly out, showing you have no self-control. Now, if that's the case, what happened? Who enticed you to speak like that? Who enticed you to speak like that? And what spirit presses you so hard that you feel like you have to speak, and then unless you speak, you don't feel like you have, have, you're getting no relief at all? Because you've been there before where you spoke where you shouldn't have spoken. You thought you was going to get relief and they do nothing but what? They didn't do nothing but charge you up to make you want to speak more. Remember that tongue is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison? 
Man, that thing has set hell even on fire. See, self-control. Hmm? You want to gain some self-control? Start really looking into deliverance. Because some of these spirits have so much of a stronghold, you ain't going, you're not going to will them out. You're not going to think them out. You're not going to pray them out. You ain't going to fast them out. Uh-oh. Well, how do you know? Been doing it for a long time. Deliverance works. Because some of them got so much of a stronghold. They're in there so deep. Now, here's a, the other part that's really bad. Spirits, demonic spirits can be in you so long and can be in operating. You could have been operating in the spirit so long that now you even accept that that's just you and not the spirit. That's some serious deception. That's just the way I am. Really? No, it ain't. I know who you are. Like y'all said, I know my thoughts towards you. They are thoughts of peace. Why will y'all counsel you to buy of him gold tried in the fire? Why would he counsel you to, to have self-control, to preach to you the fruits of the Spirit so you can manifest something contrary to his kingdom? He wouldn't do it. It's just saying, we have been operating so long after this form and fashion that we just have accepted that that's who I am. And that Spirit's like, yeah, that's who you are. I'm glad as long as you believe that, I got a good solid place here. I ain't never going to have to be moved. Hmm? I ain't never going to be moved now. I'm entrenched. I'm in there. Wherever the way you are, whoever the person you thought you may have been, or whatever you think you used to be, and, 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 and however the hell you were, be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and accept on the perfect will of God, which is your reasonable service. Nobody want to hear that. You got to be transformed just like everybody else. A lot of this rebellion, a lot of this stubbornness, a lot of this wickedness going on is because you are made an agreement, a pact, a league with demons out of which y'all is already telling us you don't make no agreements with any other mighty ones. Any other spirit, that's right. And see, you have to understand that a lot of people look at these demons as gods. Why do you think Hollywood is flooding the market with, with, with comic strips of Thor and Hulk and Superman and, and all these other people? Why? They're gods. Aquaman. Sure is entertaining. So these spirits done entrenched so long that they got you believing in your personality, you own it yourself. So if you're born again, whose personality are you supposed to be having? You're born again, that means you're no longer under the ownership of the God of this world. Because we know that one thing that the God of this world does is he blinds the minds. He blinds the minds. So a lot of you, it just ain't just behavior problems. It's demon problems. And the demons are loving every minute of it when you can't renounce them. Goes back to the acid test. What is the fruit of the spirit? See what I mean? What, is the, what are the works of the flesh? Which ones are you doing? Remember, you can't serve two masters. Uh-oh. See, the reason why I'm saying you don't have no time, no downtime to be playing around with these. These spirits have been doing this for a long time, all the way back to Adam. Long time. And redeem you from the house of slavery and draw you away and draw, from, uh, draw, and draw you away from the way in which Yahweh your Elohim has commanded you to walk, so shall remove the evil from among you. And if your brother, or your son, or your mother, or your son, daughter, or to 
or the wife uh, you cherish or your friend who is as precious to you as your own life and soul entices you secretly saying, let us go and serve other mighty ones, gods whom neither you nor your fathers have known. And the gods of the people are around about you. Near you are far from you from the one end of the earth to the other. You shall not consent to him nor listen to him. And your eyes shall not pity him, nor shall you spare him or conceal him. There's some serious stuff right here, isn't it? I was watching a show one time, right? And it was over in, in the land of the rising sun, the dragon land. I don't know if it was China or Japanese. It was one of those places, right? And they was, it was one of them, uh, what do they call them shows? Reality shows, something like this. And, you know, they have them to do stuff. And so they was getting ready to go into this temple. And they told everybody, well, okay, all right, we, we have a requirement. Before you go into the temple and stuff, we continue on with the show. You got to bow down to the statue. And, you know, I, and then the first thing they did was, well, how many of you people have a belief? How many of you Christians or something like that? Oh, yeah, I am. Okay. And then, okay, well, you got to go in. You know how many people bow, bow down? Every one of them but one. One of them said, well, I don't look like I'm going to be continuing on with this show because I am not bowing down to that thing. Everybody else consented. You know the reason why they consented? Because in their mind, ah, oh, this ain't nothing. See, in their mind, they've already deducted, they calculated, they computed. That ain't God. That ain't no God. That ain't no big deal. They did. And yet still they did it. How's the father going to look at that? How is the father going to look at that? You see what I mean? To them, they want to continue on with the reality show. They even cut the camera when there's one person. Then they came back and said, well, this person ain't going to bow. And they start putting attention on the person that wouldn't bow. You know, peer pressure. I, was like, I, I, ain't, I still ain't bowing. I said, well, out of all those people, they'll be the only one to make it to the kingdom. Because even if they ain't living nothing, not keeping the commandments, that's one thing they got convicted of, that somebody done told them, and it's unlodged in there, I ain't bound down to that thing. It's over. The book tells us, you get somebody that goes to this level, y'all don't even want you to spare them. Don't you even hide it from them. Then look what the father, how he talks. Instead, you shall certainly execute him. Your hand shall be first to be raised against him, to put him to death, and afterwards, the hand of all the people. Oh, in case y'all don't know, this is Yahshua too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a conflict? Did Yahshua ever deal with conflict? Sure he did. I mean, was he always sweet and kind and nice? I mean, if he went and turned the money changers over in the temple, was he singing kumbaya to him? Was he? When he made a whip, I had somebody say, well, he made a whip and he was just swinging it. I said, no, he wasn't. I said, it makes your conscience feel good, but he wasn't. He was swinging it. <laughs> Anybody ever have fast grandmamas? Meaning they could catch you. Fast mamas. See, I have vivid memories of my grandmother chasing all of us around, me and my cousin in the backyard, and getting every single one of us. She used to make us go get these uh, switches and then braid them, plait them, and then leave a leaf on the end. I don't know what the purpose was the leaf on the end, because the leaf wasn't on it when he got finished. Grandmama love you too. That's why she whooped your tail. <laughs> Laid in. I know it's hard for some of y'all because some of y'all ain't never got a whooping before and that's your problem too. Mm-hmm. That's one of your problems. Well, if you would get a good one. Anybody grew up in that generation like I did? That if your, your, if your grandmother was watching you and you got an ass whooping and then she told your daddy 
When he got home, what happened? He got another one. You thought it was over with. At one time, I thought, <laughs> I, just think, <laughs> I just think they just like whooping people's tail. <laughs> really, they were trying to spare you and save you from yourself. Yeah. Don't y'all do that right? For no chastisement for the present moment, seeing joy is but what? Grievous. But what does it do afterwards, though? So whom y'all love, he... And then if you really a son, he going to what? Woo-wee. See, most of you, you just been chasing. Time out. We won't talk to you. You ever had a scourging? Mm. It's amazing because it's okay when summer gets his guy, right? Ain't it all right? When I do it, what happens? She's like, eh, eh, eh. She go, you know he three. <laughs> I said, yeah, I got one that's 37, used to be three. He three, he, he four, he getting a three-year-old whooping, it just don't. Sure do. I mean, she gets him too, but she is one of those things. Mother Carol, when I used to whoop her out, she just walked down the road. She took off to get away from the screaming and the hollering. I know one thing. They're not here, but they ain't sitting up in nobody's jail. <laughs> See what I mean? They ain't sitting up in nobody's jail. Isn't that amazing? Hmm. So we're supposed to be annihilating folks like this. Today we're in, under a civil authority. So the best thing you do is tell us so we can deal with it. But I can't wait till the kingdom come back. The only one thing, there ain't going to be no death in the kingdom. So some of you think you're going to kill everybody, get that mess off of you right now. I know you're chomping at the bit, so get it off. So you shall stone him to death with stones because he has tried to draw you away from Yahweh your Elohim who have bought you from the land of Israel from the house of slavery. Then all Israel will hear and be afraid and will never again do such a wicked thing among you. If you hear it said in one of your cities which Yahweh your Elohim gives you to live in that some worthless and evil men have gone out from among you and attempted the inhabitants of their city to sin saying, let us go and serve other gods whom you have not known. Then you shall investigate and search out witnesses and ask thorough questions. If it is true and the, master, and the matter is established that this loathsome thing has been done among you, you shall most certainly strike the inhabitants of their city with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying it and all that is in it, even it's livestock with the edge of the sword. Whew. Boy, that's, that, that's, our, that's the father now. See, the way you defeat an accusing evil spirit is by staying close to Yah. <laughs> Just stay close to him. Also, another reference to us as his people to build our own houses. I had to put this in here because right, we're over here alone anyway, right? Beware, you do not forget Yahweh your Elohim by failing to keep his commandments and his judgments, his precepts, his statutes, which I am commanding you today. Otherwise, when you have eaten and are satisfied and have built good houses and lived in them. All right, let's go back again now. Beware, that don't mean you put up a beware sign. That means he wants you to be aware. All right? That you do not forget Yahweh your Elohim. Y'all hear that? Because some of you hit the lottery. You gone. Uh-oh. 
You better hope and pray that some of you don't hit it. Because that could cost you your soul. Think about it. You be wary that you do not forget Yahweh your Elohim by failing to keep his commandments. Y'all hear that? Always, always keep him at the forefront of your mind. Never forget him. And his statutes. That means his laws. Which I am commanding you to obey uh, today. Otherwise, when you have eaten and are satisfied, when you're done prospered, you to the zenith and you're good and you all that. Look, look what happens. And you have built good houses and lived in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and gold multiply and all that you have increased, then your heart will become what? Lifted up. By what? Self-conceit and arrogance. And you will what? Forget Yahweh, your Elohim, who have bought you. See, most of you are going to forget Yahweh who bought you from America. Uh-oh. He bought you out of this system for a reason. He didn't bring you over here for your health. He bought you over here for your spiritual wealth. That you will stay close to him. No matter what. Uh-oh. Yahweh only bought you out of the land of Egypt and our house of slavery. So now many times Israel, after being set free from this world, relaxed in their devotion to Yah. Some are not as serious as they were when they started. This is a very dangerous place to be. I understand that, you know, all that, 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 that excitement and stuff, you don't never lose it. It's just that you've learned how to manage it. Are y'all hearing me? You don't never lose it. You all, you learn how to manage it. And in that managing, you're maturing in the relationship. Oh, boy. For instance, you ever went a day or two without reading a book? Did your spirit, was it not your spirit disturbed? Was it not troubled? He's like, what the world? What is going on here? Are you following me? So don't make sure, make sure you don't settle up and, and start getting rocked to sleep by the cares of this life and the cares of this world and the lust of other things because pretty soon that enemy going to tie you up. Don't get caught up in entertainment to where you, you'll spend more time being entertained. Uh-oh. I'm telling you, we got a lot of preaching goes on in this ministry. I mean, we got blog talk, we got Shabbat morning, uh, and then we got Lions Den, we got Pastor Corey them putting out videos, Elder Kabir every once in a while, and then we got other videos to keep our mind on the cutting edge. We got a bunch of stuff going on. Yeah, we do. Yeah, whole fast Wednesday. We keep y'all busy. Sure do. Yeah, we keep y'all busy. We keep y'all mind engaged. Because the world is always seeking for your attention. Yeah, they are. It is too. Deuteronomy 8.15 says, when he led you with great, with, when he led you through the great and terrible wilderness with his fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground, where there was no water, it was he who bought water for you out of the flint of the rock. He fed you with manner in the wilderness of substance which your fathers did not know. So that he might humble you by dependence on him. Now I'm going to ask y'all a question. When did y'all ever, ever renege on wanting us to not be dependent upon him? I'm sorry, believe it or not, the Father wants you to ask him for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why? Because then you know who your allegiance is to. I'm telling you, he wants you 100% dependent upon him at all 
times. Even if you got a care that troubles you so much, he said, you bring it over here. Bring it on over here. Everything. Uh-oh. See, we need to understand that even now it's not us that's sustaining ourselves. We get to the point where we think we'll sustain ourselves, we're going to get heady. We're going to get self-conceit, just like he said up there. We're going to get puffed up, and then we're going to assume the Spirit's going to entice us to say, you know, we really don't need y'all, not in this matter. And then they'll lead from that one to another. And then that one to another. And then you're breaking the word because the Bible says, trust in y'all with all your heart. And in all your ways acknowledge him. And lean not to your own understanding. And he will direct your paths. Uh-oh. Sorry. He wants us 100% totally dependent upon him. Why do you think that the man is, is built as a provider? To what a wife has to always come and ask of him. To keep her subordinate and 100% dependent upon in a humble state. Same way with the father. It's to keep you humble, dependent, so you don't get pride and heady and lifted up. I seen the other damn day, y'all remember this woman named Vicar Fox? Vicar Fox. Is that her name? Vicar? Y'all know what I'm saying. Pass it, Vivica. I don't know him close enough. So in the day, she used to be a nice looking little thing. She's 60 years old. She said, you know, I'm ready to settle down and get married now. I'm like, what the? What? What the? See, back in the day, she was looking good, and she had about 30, 40 pounds now. And she said, I'm just going to let everybody know I'm going to settle down. I'm looking for a good man. Like, You're looking for a sucker. See, she done spent all of her days in riotous living, depending on her and everything about it. And she don't want no husband. She wasn't going to be ruled over in her youth. She, damn it, she's going to be ruled over in her old age. That ain't happening. I'm sorry, folks. Oh, yeah, maybe it hit y'all, but y'all want us again 100% dependent on him. Jesus said, you ask him for a fish, would he give you a serpent? If you ask him for some bread, would he give you a stone? He's all I need. He's all I need. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm bringing it full circle, too. Y'all, y'all men understand this? Y'all, y'all each are supposed to be dependent upon you 100% for everything. That's what keeps them humble. And you supposed to be 100% dependent on him. You know how many men that want to provide for their family they can't because they're sinning and y'all keeps them sick? They keep them sick so you can't go out and earn a living. Uh-oh. Why? Because you're sinning. And you just think it just come up on them. Man, y'all be, there's so much be going on in this spirit realm, man, and stuff. And, and we just, every, we always just looking for the next band-aid. Rather than looking behind what's really, truly happening. We do. That he might humble you and de- by depending on him and that he might test you to do good things for you at the end. Otherwise, you may say in your heart, my power, my strength, and my hand made me this wealth. Let's get this reality real quick, all right? We came into this world with nothing. Every time I have a son, I look at him, it's the first thing that come up in my mind. He definitely don't have nothing. The only thing he got is the breath that y'all gave him. Ah! 
God, that's it. I said, man, I was there. And guess what? When you leave, you still ain't going to have nothing. Oh, I'm going to have some clothes. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. You gone. The body is here. You ain't going to take nothing with you. They say, they say, you know, if you, hey, we're going to bury all these treasures over here next to you in a grave so you can take them with you in the next life. Who's stupid enough to believe something like that? Who is stupid enough to believe something like that? You come in this world with nothing, you're going to leave with nothing. Huh? That's that, natural. Spiritually, you came in this world without y'all, you better make sure you leave with him. You better, you better make sure you leave with him. Don't let your life, you know how many souls out there that have wasted their, this, this one opportunity at eternity? This one opportunity. Mm. But you shall remember with profound respect. What kind of respect? Profound. profound. You see the reason why I like this translation in these areas? Profound respect. Yahweh, your Elohim, for he, for it is he who has given you power to make wealth. Listen to this real close. We say it every Sabbath now. Been doing it on purpose for a couple years now. Let the words of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Yahweh. My what? My what? My what? Don't let them just become cliches when we in service. Just don't let it. It's just something we just quote. It's kind of like you saying to your wife, I love you, but it ain't nothing there. Uh-oh. Oh, y'all are my strength and my, my, and my See how real it is? This is really real. What's all this got to do with the and spirit? You ain't got too much to worry about if you stay close to Yah. That's why I started this from. Because you ain't going to stop spirits from accusing. We already know what they can do. Today, this is about staying close to him. So that you'll know his voice. And a stranger's voice, you will not follow. Oh, boy. But you remember there's him that gave you power to make wealth, that he may confirm his covenant which he swore, solemnly promised, to your fathers as it is this day. And it shall come, and it shall come about if you ever forget Yahweh your Elohim and follow other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you today that you will most certainly perish. Like the nations which Yahweh calls to perish before you, so you perish. So shall you perish because you will not listen to the voice, do not listen to obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim, accuser. Accusing spirit's mission, separate us one from another. Standard operating procedure number one, to separate what should be a bond. If you're in a family, y'all don't want nothing to disturb that family. Are y'all hearing it? Want nothing to disturb. He wants that family close. And what is Satan always trying to do? Come in and separate. Husband, he's always trying to bring division. Husband against Ish. Ish is, Ishai's against Ishai's. Children against Ish. Children against mother. Children against father. Or mother trying to put something in children to be against father. It's always trying to bring the division in some way, somehow. Uh-oh. That's Satan. 
that. But see, we're going to sit up there and just look at people that is, oh, it's just flesh and blood. No, it ain't. You got to learn how to talk spiritual. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. You notice everybody's mouths is getting really smaller. You don't, you don't hear too much nowadays out there done did all that damage and stuff. Because when I center and focus on somebody to deal with them, y'all hear my words, but I'm really dealing with them. I'm dealing with them on a whole nother level. Y'all get it? Y'all just learn that. That's how you let y'all fight your battles. Hmm? Who defeated Goliath? Y'all or David? So how did y'all fight the battle though? He gave David his strength. The power and the anointing. Uh-oh. How many times we've seen in there, oh, look at this big old army. Well, nope. Gideon, you got to get rid of a lot of them. You got too many. Because you know what's going to happen, right? If you go down there with this contingency, you're going to take all the credit for yourself. So we're going to have to have a cutoff rate right here. I want to let y'all know that you are 100% dependent upon me, and I am the one that's winning all these wars and all these battles. How did the walls of Jericho came down? How did they come down? Didn't y'all give us instruction for the walls to come down? Well, after the walls came down, then what happened? We just sit and look at the hulk, the stubble, right? Well, y'all done got to the fairy tale level, ain't you? <laughs> and so, is not y'all fighting the battle? Yes. What? By you doing something. Come on. Oh, boy. You getting it? So, accusing spirits always seeking to separate one from another, to separate us from ourselves, to separate us from y'all. So right now we see that these accusing spirits in the what? Separating business. Separating business. That's what accusing spirits in there for. Zechariah 7, they said, the word of Yahweh came unto Zechariah saying, thus speak of Yahweh the whole of hosts saying, execute true judgment. What kind of judgment? Not no, not nothing that's tainted. True judgment. Not something that's got a little you sprinkled into it. True judgment. Execute true judgment. And show mercy and compassion. Every man show mercy and compassion. Every man show mercy and compassion. Every man show mercy and compassion. Every man, everybody take a look around for a second. That's who he's talking about. Y'all hear this? See, we had this work and then we had to worry about all these people that are shysters and trying to take advantage of each other. Every man to his brother. And oppress not, don't oppress the widow, nor the what? Why? Because they're at a disadvantage. Hey, even in Israel, man, come on. If we had substance, y'all placed the onus upon us to make sure you leave the edges of the field for the poor amongst us so that they may eat. That's, see, that's y'all's welfare program. You see what I'm talking about? Uh-oh. Nor what? So, and oppress not the widow, nor the father, nor the stranger, nor the what? Poor. And let none of you imagine evil. Wait a minute. And let none. Somebody say none of you. None. That means me. See, ain't nobody want to say that one. See that? that? Them damn devils in there. Them damn demons. You see that? Somebody say, none of you. Let me help you out. Now, somebody say, that means me. <laughs> imagine, imagine what? Boy, you know, we all got work on this one. Tell me. 
Tell them we don't have to have work. Don't, don't, tell them we don't have work. Let none of you imagine what? Evil against his brother. That's in a generic form, meaning brother and sister. So, hey, in your so much for accusing. Won't be no more accusing then if we wouldn't do that in it. You know, come on, you know these evil imaginations are gonna come. So when it says, let none of you, that means don't you allow it. Don't set up and get condemned because an evil thought about your brother or sister or an accusation come up in your heart. No, no, no. Don't you allow it to prosper. Don't you allow it to flourish. Better than any damn thing, don't let it come out of your damn mouth. Gain some self-control. All things are lawful, but they're not expedient. And then what Paul fall there, but I will not be bought up under the power of any. Just because it comes to your mind don't mean you have to say it and give it life. You should be able to predetermine in your mind. If I say this, if it's going to bring life or death. Uh-oh. This is going to bring out about, well, but it's true. Then seek peace. If it's true, find a solution. Oh, uh, that's what Zechariah said. As a matter of fact, Zechariah didn't even say it. That Yahweh said it. <clears throat> Zechariah just wrote what Yah said. But they refused to hearken and pull away the shoulder and stop their ears that they should not hear. Now, y'all pleased with that? Let me say this. We are a tribe. Your true brothers are those who belong to this tribe. There are too many voices that walk and speak contrary to the tribe. Even in the days of the apostles, if they had a matter, they would go up to Jerusalem. You know, I talked about that last night. We'll confer with Peter, James, and John, right? People do not do this today. If Yah led you the straight way, then he knew what he was doing. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. Thank y'all for salvation, but if he led you here, he knew how stubborn and rebellious you were. Yeah, he, he, knew, he knew you were a tough cookie. Yeah, he did. He knew you were a tough cookie. Yeah, yeah, you know you're a tough cookie. Some of you are a tough cookie while you're soft on the outside. But you're hard on the inside. Some of you are rotten. He led me here. I, I know I was a tough cookie. I was all the above. Rotten. <laughs> the only thing that's going to correct us is the word anyway. The only thing that's going to correct us is our love for him. You know I'm telling the truth. If anyone speaks anything contrary to what we speak and teach, let them be accursed. Did not Paul talk like that too? All right, Galatians 1, 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the, um, into the message of Messiah unto another message. He said, I marvel that you're so soon removed. Hmm? This is Paul speaking to the Galatians, right? Which is not another. But there be some, what do they do? That trouble you and will pervert the message of Messiah. I always ask people, man, look, I don't know what's so bad. I've been living here for a long time. I still can't see what's bad. But if it's that bad, don't you want to save me? Why don't nobody want to save Pastor Dow? I spent all these years trying to help save you and stuff. At least I, I mean, return it, man. Return the love. I did the best I could. Why is it that nobody don't want to save me? Don't I need saving? Don't I need redeeming? I need to be loved too. I just want to be loved. <laughs> I understand he that rebuketh in the gates is hated. You get it? But I want to be loved too. 
Never mind. See, this is how you know these people got wickedness in their heart because they don't want me saved. If, if, if I'm going to the same heaven, they won't go to hell. That's bad. When you came, I received you with open arms. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, you think I got a problem? Well, save me. I want to be redeemed, too. But they don't want that. Oh, never mind. But there will be some that will trouble you and will pervert the message of Messiah. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other message unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. That's why I say over and over again, if anybody's speaking anything contrary to what I'm saying, let them all be accursed. Every single one of them. Now, you know the reason why I talk like that, right? Because I got, I mean, I have some serious confidence as a man. And y'all know only that, I got Shemaim backing me up. You know what I mean? I just ain't some just regular old preacher playing preaching. You understand what I mean? Believe me, I know exactly who I am, therefore I don't abuse my power. You know why? Because I'm going to receive a greater condemnation. I still can't figure out why can't you use another word besides condemnation. That's what judgment is. We're going to receive a greater judgment. Some people fear y'all while they're walking here on this earth, and some people don't. Don't even keep it in their mind. You just can't be running around abusing brothers and sisters at your pleasure and leisure. Don't you know whatever you do to one of these little ones you're doing to y'all? Oh, oh. Y'all getting this, right? Whew. You could have never told me in my life that, that I would be able to raise the dead, cast out devils, perform a miracle. Are right, you following me? Much less be filled with the Holy Spirit. Damn so not preaching. You can forget that. That was Mother Carol. Mother Carol says she prayed to the Father. Father, I'm only going to ask you just two things. Just two things. That's all I'm asking in life. I don't want to be married to no man in the military, and I don't want to be married to no preacher. Is that what you said? <laughs> hey, guess what? I wasn't either. I was military, but I wasn't neither one of them when she prayed that. Somebody say, y'all know we have need of. He probably said, look at this stubborn woman. All right, set it up. Because she need to be saved. <laughs> you need to be saved. That's how she got saved. So much for all her infamy wisdom. So keep praying. Tell the Father what you don't want. <laughs> Go ahead and keep asking. See now, see, now nobody want to ask nothing. <laughs> Accused, anathema, a religious ban. You hear that? Concretely excommunicated. A thing, a person, a curse, anathema, curse. So what he's saying. But though we are an angel from heaven, Paul is saying, I don't give a damn who it says. Anybody come preaching any other message about what I'm delivering, you let them be excommunicated. You let them be cursed. I say the same thing boldly. Because I know I'm preaching the word. I know I'm preaching the message. And you are the seal of my pastorship. You know because you get the ears to hear. There ain't no, hey, it ain't the one who preaching is anything. Just like it ain't the one who's sowing is anything. Or the one who's watering. He ain't nothing. What is something is the one that gives the increase. That's him. Because we're all workers in his vineyard. 
Uh oh. What are shepherds supposed to do? Protect the sheep, right? Can't protect the sheep, but sheep won't go over to another pastor. Won't go eat off on the grass on over here. Stay over here. I said, a lot of people don't know where that staff go. It was somewhere in here. We used to have a staff in there. You know, a lot of people don't know why this shepherd was carrying around his staff. Yeah, it was there to beat up on predators and stuff like that too, but it was mainly if you were stubborn to break your dang shank bone. Make sure you can't step around anymore. Now I'm going to tell y'all about how Vicky had back problems some year ago and she needed healing. You remember that, Vicky? So Vicky decides she, she's got there tending the goats. So Vicky go over and do one of them grandmama bend overs. And that ram came and pow! Did that ram nail you in the ass? Your back, you got hit though, didn't you? Your back needed healing, didn't it? I'm trying to figure out who got hit in the ass. She still got hit. She got hit in her back. Who would ever thought y'all would bought some healing like that? Did you not pray? See, you like these other people. See, I thought you would have. Y'all remember the leopard? I thought you would have did this and you would have done that and you would have did that. Take your ass down to the Jordan and dip. <laughs> I thought if he was a man, I sure he would have waved his hand. He would have done this. He would have done that. Never mind. See, miracles was going on back then. If you got leprosy, you already, somebody done sent the man of y'all to you. And the man of y'all sent you a word. Why are you murmuring and complaining? If you wanted a word, he'd tell you to go dip in that nasty. I wouldn't care if it's a septic tank. <laughs> well, wait a minute, Pastor Dow. I'm not. If I want to get healed. Anyway, that goes back to my statement. Desperate people get deliverance. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, man, we are, woo, we are, man, you know me. I, I don't like being this long. Uh, as we said, therefore, oh, we already did that. Now, he says, for I, do I now persuade men or Yah? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Messiah. Let's recap this a little second. We see according to the scripture how important it is for us to maintain a bond or a band of unity. We also see evil spirits work extremely hard to divide and separate us from each other. He does. Let's go deeper into the works of accusing spirits. Characteristics of accusing spirits. The, the spirit of accusation is at the root of all roots, its nature wants to divide and conquer and ensnare. Tell me whenever, tell me if there's ever a week to go by that there's not some type of division going on either in a home or in a community or a homestead. Tell me it's not. That means accusing spirits is working. Demons manifest, meaning they operate through people. They actually speak through people. Examples of demons speaking through people in the book. Remember Matthew 16, 21 when Jesus rebuked Peter? You hear that? But who was he rebuking? How is it that we don't know when Satan's talking today? See what I mean? You have to walk in the spirit. Paul rebuked and said to the spirit over in Acts 16 and 18 and said to the spirit, remember that, that damsel? They kept grieving him over and over again. What did he do? He spoke to the, why ain't nobody speaking to the spirit nowadays? 19.3, an evil spirit answered through Sceviah, who was a Yehudim and a chief priest. So there's evidence that spirits speak through people. Buffeted by negative thoughts. 
about ourselves. How many of y'all have been bothered, bothered about negative thoughts about yourself? Low self-esteem. Hey, chasing after y'all, come here for a second. <laughs> chasing after y'all. Now, we, gotta, we ain't going to, I'm going to say none of this stuff that I said up in 002. But I told him, well, now there's 002 over, I'm back in normal place. All right. So, chasing after Yah, him. I lit him up at 002, constantly on him. Is that right? At one time, I was like, so we got everybody else in here that's in unity, doing push-ups, but your fat ass want to mess up every damn thing, don't you? Yo, you just want to be different. Then I'll talk to you like that. I laid into you too, didn't I? He turns around, he, a day or two later, he's running a relay on his team. That's why he lost, because he was on his team. He runs. And all of a sudden, just pow, he, he falls over, feet goes up in the air, and I'm on his megaphone. I say, you see that piece of amphibious caca up there decomposing on the damn sorry, Get his, blah, 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 up off the dang, blah, 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 blah. He still finished. Zero, zero, he did zero, zero, 001 and zero, zero, 002. <laughs> Frogman, Frogman had them running up that dang hill. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And he was doing that. When it was all said and done, he had big, gigantic bruises all on the back of his hamstrings. He didn't quit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. His father... It used to be on SEAL Team 6, right? I said, just because your father on SEAL Team 6, that don't mean your ass is. <laughs> Man showed himself to be hard, reliable. One, one, one that you definitely can go to war with because he won't, he won't abandon you. He won't let you down. You definitely know, and he won't quit. Uh-oh. So it was a few weeks ago, I said, hey, man, look like you done lost a little bit there. He, what, what did you say? I took to heart what you said. <laughs> he said, I took to heart what you said. And he done got after it, so he's still going. Looking fit, looking trim. Man, hard as woodpecker lips. Look at it. Certified bovine. Huh? Isn't that beautiful? So why is it? Now, mind you, he was in 002, and we was less than kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, less than kind. So why is it that he took it. I know what it was. You know the reason why he was able to take everything? Because when the sower went forth to sow, some seed fell on good ground. Uh-oh. For those of you that said, he always bitching. He always talking about our house, our side. He always talking about how we look. He always talking about this. And then some seed fell on bad ground. See what I mean? That's just like anything that goes on in his life. You have control of the way you're going to respond or react. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Somebody could sit and call you every name under the sun, and you can sit there and just look. Only time it really affects you, if it's true. 
Why get all peed off about it? Uh-oh. You know what I mean? Then here comes the Spirit. Well, I hear you responding. So, yeah, but you don't ever see how I respond. I'm having a good time. I don't believe a thing that these people are saying because I know it ain't me. You understand what I mean? So I talked about them. Now I'm talking about them again. In front of everybody. You're doing a good job, son. Stay hard. Hallelujah. Bless you, Chase. You're doing a good job. Probably one of the hardest men we got in the ministry. I'm serious. That brought hard. <laughs> mm. Back to his negative thoughts. So he had negative thoughts. Many of us deal with negative thoughts. Demons lying to you all the time. Especially you women, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean, are, are y'all finished listening to these spirits telling you how ugly you are? You should be done with that a long, long time ago. Why well, pay attention to them? They're there because they know it's important to you. They don't never challenge me how ugly I am because I don't give a shit. <laughs> so therefore, they don't entice me or tell me about it. Ah, you understand what I mean? He's only going to hit you where he know that it's going to affect you. What you need to know is how you, what areas do you get affected in? And then get strong in those areas. Build up your resolve so that you don't get affected. That make sense? Thief coming out but to steal, kill, and destroy, right? Remember, I've always told us that an accusation can either be true or false. It can. Still an accusation, though. We need to discern the intent of the accusation. What is, what is the purpose and the end result of the accusation? Is it life, meaning together, or is it death, meaning to separate? What is your intent? Because a lot of times, you do know that somebody really tries to be good to you, but because you're so damn evil, they can't be good to you. Because the way you take everything, somebody's always shooting at you, Somebody's always against you. Somebody's always opposing you. No, it ain't. Your brother and sister ain't always that way. That's just you. Oh, man. Y'all know I'm telling the truth? Look at you looking. You would actually have everybody to believe that it's just you and y'all against the whole world. What do accusing spirits say and do? I can't have fellowship with you, and you can't have fellowship with me because we don't agree. Accusing spirits attempt to separate us from Yah and our brethren and ourselves, but the truth is that we all have fellowship if we walk in the what? Light as he is in the what? Light. That's how we have fellowship one with another. It's still all centered around him. That's what we have seen, we have heard, and declared unto you, that you may also have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Yahshua the Messiah. And these things write out unto you, that your joy may be heavy and depressed and full of sorrow and wickedness and heaviness. And... That ain't what he said. He said that your joy may be what? Full. This then is the message which I've heard of him and declaring to you that Yah is light. And in him is no bad translation. Bad translation. It ain't darkness. It ain't darkness. Yah didn't say, let there be darkness. Darkness is his pavilion. There's no knowing, unknowing in him. That's what it should be translated as. In him, there's no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in <clears throat> ignorance, unknowing, we lie and, we, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, 
We have fellowship one with another. So the only time that fellowship is broke off is when we're contrary. See, if you know the will of Yah, then how can you walk in what they call darkness? I know what the will of Yah is. You know what the will of Yah is? You know what the will of Yah is? I know exactly what it is. Your sanctification. This is the will of Yah. Even your set apart. It's your sanctification. Well, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Messiah, his son, cleanses us from all, all sin. Facts. Most of our repeating of offenses are told after our feelings. Meaning, we mostly repeat or replay accounts from the feelings of our hurts or resentments. There's something that's familiar, what we've done, if we're in a brand new environment over here, and something that's familiar, what we dealt with before, we automatically associate that situation with the way we felt. And then we're not led by the Spirit. Now we're led by feelings. We haven't even checked these feelings. Them feelings still there? That means that Spirit's still there. If them feelings still there, them negative feelings still there, then that spirit is still there. And something's got to be done about that spirit. Everybody ain't after you. You ain't all that important. You ain't important to the king, but you ain't that important to everybody else. Uh-oh. Oh, hallelujah. That don't mean everybody's diminishing you. It's just that it, it, it don't take all that. Characteristics. Keeping a, keeping a record of wrongs. How many people have done that? As soon as you get in a little disagreement, first thing you do is bring up this, this, this roller deck full of wrongs that you're supposed to forget about. You know the reason why I keep a record of wrongs, right? So we can condemn the person in front of us so we can get, get, make them stop what they're saying. It's like you watch these people out here in the world. You go to Walmart. If you watch some of these, listen to these old folks' conversations, not that you should, but if you just catch it, they're over here setting up literally like a badge of honor, one up in each other on who has the worst ailment or the worst disease or the worst sickness. Oh, yeah, I hear what you said. Yep, 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 yeah. I broke my foot last week. Oh, but there ain't nothing. Hey, I, look, I, 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 I crushed my leg. Well, that ain't nothing. I, I mean, I get it, but man, they took out half my colon the other day. I said, shoot, man, they took out my lung three years ago. And they just keep going and going. I'm going. I said, this is a deaf squad right here. All they doing is speaking deaf with each other. Bring him more deaf. I got to go back to the doctor. He said, he don't know what this is. Say so we gotta send, we gotta send it off to the lab. I think it may be cancer. Guess what it is? Always reminding someone of their past failures after they have returned from their sins. The enemy will always accuse, blame others what they do and don't do, what they say and don't say. It's about control. 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 Manifestations. Easily offended. How many people are easily offended? I say, ain't nobody going to admit that. Look, nobody raised their hand. Nobody raised their hand. Father, we arrived here straightway. In all your glory, I will see you there. Y'all take a note of this. Nobody in straightway is easily offended. Nobody raised their hand. We got it on camera. Now everybody want to, all of a sudden. If you know you're easily offended, then guess what? You got some work to do then, don't you? Who's making you so sensitive? Exaggerating offenses and failures. Mistrust. People deal with mistrust? Gossip and innuendos. You know, this last situation, I had the, some, the pastor coming in and said, Pastor, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. They said, man, I know it's hard for you to trust anybody. I said, no, it ain't. 
Not at all. I said, I deal with each person based on their own person. I don't judge people after events and things that happen because it's unfair. That just wouldn't be right. That's kind of like me going into a, a marriage with a woman and then she viewing me after everything that's done happened to her in the past. That ain't me. There are similarities of the way I talk, the way I speak, and certain things because of being a man. But I'm not that man. So it's totally unfair for you to sit there and try to treat me, look at me, or view me the way that someone else has done to you. And even if you get married to a virgin, she's going to compare herself to somebody else. Is that what you like? Uh, I'm married to you. But is that what you like? I love you. But is that what you like? Damn it, we ain't talking about like. You talking about like. I'm talking about love. Stop this shit. That's when those spirits get in there. Are you pleased with me? You still here? I'm just asking, are you pleased with me? Listen, if you don't stop this bullshit, <laughs> you better go get some deliverance. Why has everything got to be delivered? See what I'm talking about? But see, it's you. Listen, I was over here minding my own damn business. You the one coming here badgering me with all this stuff. Y'all know I'm telling the truth? Look at him looking. You know I'm telling the truth. If it wasn't for somebody else in the past, next thing you know, you just, you ain't got nothing else to compare it to, so you start, I, 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 I know I don't look like her, but I can try. What are you talking about? Well, I saw you looking over there. Looking where? Well, you know, she is beautiful. What the hell is wrong with you? Never mind. I don't blame none of y'all for saying nothing because you know I'm right. You all done been there. You done been in that gauntlet. Ain't nobody never satisfied. Gossiping in your window. Scapegoat mentality. Scapegoat mentality. Self-condemnation. Self-accusation. Not walking in or accepting forgiveness. This is all these are manifestation accusing spirits. Establishing non-biblical standards for others to obtain. Suicide. I'll just end it all. No, you ain't. You're going to start it all. So somebody need to tell you what the real reality of it is. You ain't in it all. You just getting ready to start. <laughs> Blaming others for your problems. Anybody ever done that? Emotional diseases. Nightmares and spiritual attacks. You know that demons do do that, right? Anybody ever been in these? You ain't never had no demon, no nightmares before. Or, it's easy to change them things. Become Superman. Demons try to make you fearful. Man, shoot. Become Archangel Michael. You mean tell me you can't control your dreams? Boy, y'all all finished then, isn't you? Sometimes he'll throw a whammy in there. You ain't going to be able to get them all, but remember, a lot of it is junk mail. Yeah, it is. Anxiety attacks, panic attacks, stress and anxiety. Depression and broken heart. Accusation of self. You ugly. How many of y'all men care that y'all ugly? I'm not going to ask y'all. I'm going to leave it right here. Because men don't care. They don't give a damn. They don't believe it. Because they, they don't ever have no spirits telling them they're ugly. Maybe I'm wrong. Have you ever had a demonic spirit? And you look in the mirror and stuff, all come to your mind. You ugly. You have? Wow. You unique. <laughs> that means you must think a lot of yourself. 
you try not to. Oh, it's coming out now. Oh, it's in. It's coming out. It's oozing. You see it now? It's, it's oozing now, but ooh, wait. No wonder. So in other words, you can learn from Gabriel. Don't think too much of yourself, too high of yourself. Don't, don't think you God gets the men and you pretty and all this old other shit. Otherwise, you ain't got to worry about hearing you ugly. He said, I try not to. You heard him. Ain't nothing wrong with being truthful. We just know you. <laughs> he said, I know I ain't ugly. That's why you get attacked. Think about it. You try to go on and get high on yourself and see what happens. Satan coming. Poor women. Bless y'all heart. Bless y'all heart. Y'all can't even, y'all matter of fact, y'all should stay out of the mirror. They can't walk past the mirror without looking at it. You still look the same. Still look the same you did two minutes ago. If it ain't the mirror, it's the phone. See, y'all gonna stop that mess. Y'all gonna get delivered one day when you agree with me. It's the truth. You be looking for the best angle. And mama there say, yeah, see, it runs in the family. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Looking for weakness in others, meaning gathering uh, the sink, meaning, meaning gathering the sink on any and all to deflect others from seeing the real you. The trick of the enemy, to get you to believe these thoughts from accusing spirits are your own. They can set up camp. They, evil spirits, will have you to believe it's just you and part of your personality. You know me. I tell it like it. Like it is what it is, right? No, it ain't you. That's that old evil Adamic nature. You know, I know it ain't it ain't none of you women to be bold. You know why? Because y'all's already said you're beautiful, humble, meek, quiet, spirit which in the sight of y'all is of great pride. He already told you what you are. Anything opposite than that, it ain't y'all. Don't give me that's just my personality. So since when did you inherit manhood? You got women out here more masculine than men nowadays. Don't, don't, don't buy into that lie. When you agree with the thoughts and you meditate on them over and over again, the spirit of accusation will gain ground in your life, which will be a stronghold. Not every thought you have is your own. The fruit of accusation means it projects fears, jumbles thought patterns, chaotic thinking, accuse others of their sin. Romans 2 1 says, You are inexcusable, old man. Whosoever you are that judges, for wherein you judge us, another you condemn yourself. For you that judges do us the same things. Many times we feel condemnation because of our own life. It's not lining up in the area that we are condemning ourselves in. That's condemnation, accusations, freedom. Deliverance. Now, you can sit and get these messages all day long, but if you don't spend your own independent time, due diligence in studying and researching what you need deliverance from for yourself, it, it's just like uh, water that rolls off a duck back. It ain't going to help none. You've got to become proactive in this. You are spiritually at the place you want to be because that's where you want to be. It ain't nobody's fault that you're at the place where you want to be because that's exactly where you want to be. You understand that? You can be as spiritually as close to y'all as you want or far away as you want. 
Don't tell me. You can make your, your marriages work. You just got to die out to yourself in a lot of areas. You got a bunch of lies that you have to unbelieve. Uh-oh. You got things you need to change. Nothing's going to change until you change. You got to change. Yep, yep. You got to change. You got to change. Glory to the King. Ain't y'all good? Y'all learn anything? Well, let's hope they don't slip no more. Hallelujah. So when y'all see stuff like this happening, know, know what it is. Become spiritual minded. You understand what I mean? Well, Pastor, that means I ain't got no downtime. You're going to go to sleep at night. You get the downtime then. And still then, until then, stay dialed in. Hallelujah. Let us stand, Israel. Three o'clock, okay? Glory to the King. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in our sight. Oh, Yah, my strength and my redeemer. Dismissed in the magnificent name of Yahshua the Hamashiach, Israel. Shabbat Shalom, the King is coming. Thank <laughs> you.